Today, it's movie recap time for About Time, released in 2013. It all begins with an introduction to the members of the Lake family. There's the always active father, James, the unsentimental mother, Mary, the good-hearted yet absent-minded uncle, Desmond, the skinny, awkward son, Tim, and the free-spirited daughter, Katie. It is a family tradition to host a New Year's Eve party with family and friends every year. At this year's party, Tim awkwardly walks around the crowd, following his friend Jay. When the countdown to the new year begins, Polly, a girl he's been talking to, leans in for a kiss, but Tim disappoints her and simply shakes her hand. The next morning, Tim wakes up feeling embarrassed and with a dreadful hangover. Soon after, his father, James, tells Tim that he's about to share a secret that will change his life forever. According to James, the men in their family, including Tim, possess the ability to travel back in time. However, they can't go to a past they didn't experience or to a place they've never visited. The trick is achieved by going to a dark place, like a large cupboard, and thinking of the place and time where they want to be. Naturally, Tim assumes his father is joking. To prove his father is pranking him, Tim goes inside the closet and thinks of the New Year's Eve party the previous night. After a few moments, he comes out of the closet and is astonished to see himself dressed exactly as he was the day before. He hears music and loud conversations coming from downstairs. As he gets to the first floor, Jay finds him and drags him along. This time, Tim manages to evade a table that they previously knocked over. At the countdown, Tim takes his second chance and kisses Polly, who approves his move. Shortly after, Tim returns to the closet and travels back to the present time. Realizing that time travel is real, Tim carefully listens to his father's experience about the ability. Tim finally understands how James always seemed to have a lot of time on his hands. His dad advises him not to use the ability for money or power since many men in the family have lived miserable lives chasing after them. Tim then decides to use his ability to find love. That summer, Katie invites her boyfriend's cousin, Charlotte, to spend two months with them at their beach house. One lovely afternoon, they all sunbathe outside. When Charlotte asks Tim to put sunscreen on her back, he clumsily spills half the bottle on her. Feeling utterly embarrassed, he goes back in time and handles it more casually and carefully this time. Throughout the following weeks, Tim does his best to impress Charlotte but constantly fails. Finally, summer is about to end, and it's Charlotte's last day with the family. On the evening before she departs, Tim goes to her room to share his feelings, but soon discovers that his sister had already warned Charlotte that he might do this. Charlotte says the last-minute approach was not a good idea. She also adds that things might have turned out differently had he talked to her before. Tim then goes back in time to confess his feelings to Charlotte in the middle of the summer. However, this time, Charlotte tells him to ask her again on her last night with them. Tim sees that he never stood a chance with her and also learns that traveling back in time can't make someone fall in love with you. Soon after Charlotte's departure, Tim leaves their home and goes to London, where he moves in with James' friend, Harry. Tim looks forward to this new chapter of his life, but soon realizes Harry is an easily angered playwright. In the initial six months, Tim's romantic endeavors find no luck since his career as a lawyer pretty much only introduces him to men. One evening, his fortunes are about to change when Jay takes him to Don's Le Noir, a restaurant where guests dine in complete darkness. They sit next to two girls named Mary and Joanna. In the darkness, Tim and Mary engage in conversation and have a fantastic time. After dinner, Tim and Jay finally meet the girls face to face. Tim can't believe his eyes when he sees Mary, and it's clear that there is a strong connection as they lock eyes. She gives him her phone number, and they go their separate ways. Tim walks home with a cheerful stride, only to be welcomed by Harry's awful mood. It turns out the premiere night of Harry's play was ruined by the lead actor forgetting his lines. Tim then decides to go back in time and make things better. He approaches the lead actor, Tom, and casually advises him to practice his lines. Although his strategy works, another actor ends up forgetting his lines instead. So Tim goes back in time once again and fixes it, making the play a big success. However, to Tim's dismay, he realizes that Mary's number is no longer on his phone. His time traveling erased his delightful evening with Mary. The following day, Tim feels disheartened but joins a jubilant Harry for breakfast. When Harry shares the newspaper to show him the news on his play, Tim immediately notices an ad for a Kate Moss exhibition in the city. Recalling Mary is a huge fan of Kate Moss, Tim spends several days at the exhibit, desperately hoping to run into her. After a whole week, Mary finally appears, and Tim approaches her nervously. Their interaction, however, 
doesn't go well, and he learns that Mary now has a boyfriend named Rupert. It turns out Mary met Rupert at Joanna's party. Tim asks them all of the details regarding the party and goes back in time to intervene. He gets to Joanna's apartment and quickly brings up Kate Moss to convince Mary to leave the party with him before Rupert arrives. As they leave, they brush past Rupert. In the meantime, the two enjoy a delightful dinner where they further deepen their connection. Tim ends up walking Mary home, and she invites him up to her apartment. Things heat up, and they proceed to the bedroom. However, after tripping over Mary's shoes and having trouble removing her bra, Tim experiences an awkward first time with Mary. He resolves to go back in time, skipping over her shoes and quickly undressing her. This time everything goes smoothly, and the couple has a fantastic first night of passion. Over the following months, their relationship continues to bloom, and they eventually move in together. One evening, Tim goes to the theater with a co-worker named Rory. Just after the play ends, Tim runs into Charlotte, but the conversation quickly gets quite awkward. He tries it a second time, but it still goes terribly. When he decides not to go for a third approach, Charlotte spots him outside and initiates the conversation. She ends up inviting Tim to dinner, where she mentions regretting turning him down that summer. After Charlotte's request, Tim walks her to her apartment and gets invited to go inside. He hesitates for a moment and says he needs to leave. Turning down his first love makes Tim realize how much he cares about Mary. He bolts back to their home and wakes up Mary to propose to her. When it ends up not being as romantic as planned, Tim tries it again. On the second attempt, she happily says yes. During that summer, Tim takes Mary home and introduces her to his parents. Mary and her mother-in-law get along, and Tim enjoys some quality time with James. To his surprise, Katie is also home after not getting used to life in London. Shortly after, the whole family bursts in joy when Tim and Mary announce their upcoming wedding and Mary's pregnancy. Despite the stormy weather during the ceremony and reception, their wedding is filled with romance and laughter. When the tent is blown away by the wind, everyone goes inside the house to take cover. After Rory, Harry, and Jay mess up their speeches, Tim travels back in time and chooses his dad as his best man, who finally delivers a good speech. A few months later, Mary gives birth to their daughter, Posey. They move into a new house, and it's soon time to celebrate Posey's first birthday. All the guests arrive, including Rory and Harry, but Katie is late to the party. When the doorbell rings, Tim answers it, but only sees Katie's troublesome boyfriend, Jimmy. He and Katie had argued earlier that day, so they decided to head to the party separately. They soon find out that she had been drinking earlier that day, leading her to crash her car on the way to Tim's house. Thinking it would solve the problem, Tim goes back in time and picks her up instead. However, Katie is still depressed and has a drinking problem stemming from her toxic relationship with Jimmy. Tim then resolves to tell her his secret so that her life may improve. He takes Katie back in time to the New Year's Eve party where she met Jimmy years before. Instead of flirting with him, she releases her anger on Jimmy, even though the guy has no idea who she is by then. They go back to the present, and Katie immediately realizes her feelings for Tim's friend. After they change the past, Katie turns out to be in a healthy relationship with Jay. Tim then heads back home feeling good, but soon discovers that he has a son instead of his daughter, Posey. The surprise makes his heart sink. Tim instantly goes into a cupboard and travels to the past, when his son was born. There, he seeks advice from his father. James confirms that the slightest change he makes before his child is conceived is likely to result in a different baby. If he wishes to keep Posey, he can never change anything that happened before she was conceived. Unable to accept losing Posey, Tim travels back one more time to undo the changes he made to his sister's life and allows the car accident to happen. As Katie lies in the hospital, Tim and Mary stay by her side until she gets better. Their support leads Katie to decide on a better life with smarter decisions. Now aware of the alternative timeline where she's with his friend, Tim mentions to Katie that Jay has a crush on her. They get home from the hospital, and Tim feels very relieved to see his daughter. In spite of Mary's resistance at first, they also conceive a son about two years later. One evening, Tim helps Mary prepare for an important meeting, but when he leaves Posey by herself downstairs, she destroys a crucial manuscript from Mary's office. Tim wants to use time travel to fix it, but their night is brutally interrupted by a call from his mother, announcing that James has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Tim, Mary, and Katie then go to the beach house to visit them. When Tim talks to his dad, he finds out their ability can't undo his cancer without risking Tim and Katie's births. In the end, being able to time travel can't fix all the things life throws at them. 
So James gives Tim a lesson he considers of the utmost importance. He tells Tim to go through life as normally as possible, with all the everyday issues and worries. After he experiences the day for the first time, he should go back and relive those hours while paying attention to how sweet life can be. Tim takes his father's advice to heart and discovers joy in both the ordinary and extraordinary moments of his life. However, some days are just too harsh to relive, such as the day James passes away. Not ready to bid farewell, Tim goes back in time to spend time with his father during his healthier days. After James' death, the fact that Tim can still visit his father whenever he misses him comforts him. However, shortly after, Mary decides that she wants a third child. Tim hesitates, knowing that another child means no more visits to his father in the past. After some thought, he realizes he shouldn't be hung up on the past and agrees to have another baby. Months later, Mary is pregnant and will be giving birth soon. Realizing it's his last chance to see James, he goes back in time and plays table tennis with his father for the last time. Seeing the sadness in Tim's eyes, James notices that it is their last time together. He accepts it and lets Tim know that he agrees with his son's decision. As a goodbye treat, they both travel back in time to when Tim was just a young boy. With plenty of energy to spare, James and Tim play by the beach for the last time. The son says his final goodbyes to James and returns to the present when his third child is born. Years later, we see that Tim goes on with life normally, sharing both laughs and tears with his family. Meanwhile, Katie also gives birth to her child with Jay. One day, as Tim prepares breakfast for his kids and relishes their presence, he decides not to time travel again, living each day as if it's the second time he's lived it. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, Please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.